And Donald Trump is joining us uh, right now on the phone. Uh, how did that meeting with Mitt Romney go, Donald? Well, I think it went really well. Uh, we had the meeting at Trump Tower, and I, I learned a lot about him. I think he learned a lot about me. We had a, a really great meeting, I think, Wolf. Because, you know, last uh, April, we looked it up, uh, you were not all that uh, positive about his chances. You didn't think necessarily he resonated with voters, but that's changed. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think he did really well in the debates, and he's showing something that's very good. We have to see. It's a long way to go, and nobody's endorsing anybody, and, and we'll have to see how it all really comes out. But we had a really good meeting, and uh, I think we'll have other meetings. We, had, we hit it off very well, I will say. I think even better than I had anticipated. That wasn't the first time you've ever met him, was it? No, I've met him before. So uh, what did you talk about specifically? Well, I don't want to get into that too much, but we discussed the basic points. And one of the things that I hit very hard, and I think he's a real believer, is that China is taking tremendous advantage of this country. And we can't get this country back on track unless we do something about China and unless we do something about OPEC. Every time the country starts getting a little more solid, OPEC raises the price of fuel and raises the price of oil. And all of a sudden, we go off, and nobody knows why. But every single time a good report comes out, they raise the price of oil, and it's disgraceful. And we discussed that, and he's a believer. And I think we, uh, we, just, we just agree on certain very important issues. Uh, was there anything you disagreed with him on? Well, I don't want to comment on that, but uh, certainly we agreed on a lot of things. And I just think it's extremely important for the right candidate. I mean, if the right candidate doesn't come along, somebody else is going to come along. I just think it's very, very important that the right candidate go against President Obama and wins. This election is vital. Did he ask for your advice, Donald? Well, I don't want to put it that way, but certainly we, uh, we threw out ideas that I think both of us either agreed on or certainly are subject to agree on. And we had uh, a great talk. Here is a question that's already come up. Uh, there were a lot of camera crews, as you can imagine, waiting outside of Trump Tower. They, they wanted to get a picture of you and Mitt Romney, but no photo opportunity, no picture in contrast to some of your other meetings with Republican presidential candidates. It was, was that deliberate or was that just a snafu? What happened? Well, it was deliberate, and we wanted to keep it as private as we could. We also, uh, you know, from, from the standpoint of Mitt, you know, there's no endorsement or anything at this point. It's very early in the process. And uh, I think that, you know, I'm not sure that either of us would have felt comfortable at this point with pictures. Because there were pictures with, uh, with Rick Perry and Sarah Palin and others, right? Well, yeah, but the cameras are pretty good. I guess maybe we did a better job this time. What did you think? Uh, who was more impressive, Rick Perry or Mitt Romney? Well, I don't want to say that's an unfair question, I think. I certainly wouldn't say that because, you know, I, I had great meetings with both and with Michelle Bachman and, you know, frankly, and with Sarah Pellin. And I don't know what Sarah's going to be doing. I guess people are waiting and waiting. And really, it's sort of an amazing thing. We just don't know. She's hard to figure. And maybe that's not so bad that she's hard to figure. But uh, I don't think it would be a fair question or a fair answer. You say Mitt Romney has done well in the debates. So Rick Perry... Everyone seems to agree, hasn't necessarily done all that well. You've watched the debates. What did you think? Well, actually, I was in Australia, and I came back, and I watched the debate. Australia, and I came back, and I watched the debates. And I think the press was very, very tough on Rick Perry, but certainly I would think he would be the first to admit it wasn't his finest hour, or, as the expression goes, two hours. Uh, he didn't do as well as he would have liked, I guess, but... Uh, I think the press was extremely tough on him. I do think Mitt did very well, and, you know, I think he did better than the press is reporting, but let's see what happens. Do you think it's still possible that another candidate could emerge, like Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, despite all of his repeated assertions that he's not running? Well, Chris is a very good friend of mine, and I know him very well, and I've been with him for a long time, and I just don't think he's running. I think he's been a great governor, and I own a lot of property in New Jersey, and I can tell you he's had a positive impact on New Jersey and values and even the image of New Jersey, but I just don't see him running. I, I really don't believe he's going to run. I mean, he's told me the same thing as he's told everybody else, and, you know, I, I hear all of these reports where he's thinking about it and he's giving it another thought. I just don't see it happening. Because the last person who seemed to suggest that it's still possible 
was the former governor, Tom Kane of New Jersey, quoted as saying that maybe Governor Christie is, in fact, rethinking his refusal to run. And they're, they're, they go back a long time, as you probably know. That's true. That's but, true. But, I don't think he is. I think he's really made up his mind. But the world and life is full of surprises. This is still a wide open race. I wrote, on that, wrote, wrote about that on my blog, my Situation Room blog today. Uh, uh, Donald, I'm going to play a little clip. This is a new DNC ad. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but listen to it and then we'll discuss because it mentions you. Okay. Mitt Romney and Donald Trump are meeting today. Well, they do have a lot in common. They have both done well for themselves. Both support an economic plan that would help out the richest and the big corporations, but not the middle class. That would slash Social Security, end Medicare as we know it, and the big corporations, but not the middle class. That would slash Social Security, end Medicare as we know it, cut funds for health care, research and development, and schools. Eliminate investments that will create jobs and keep America competitive. And what do the American people have to say to those who would return to the same failed policies that created our challenges? If I, if I, if I. It ends uh, with a picture of you, sort of, uh, uh, it's an obvious statement. Uh, uh, what, what did you think of that? Well, actually, I got to see that. I saw it on one of the shows this morning, and I thought it was amateur night. Uh, the ad was, you know, not a very good one. It was also, you know, they talk about keeping America competitive. We're not competitive. That's the problem. We're not competitive at all. The world is laughing at us, Wolf, and so we're certainly not. And I was very insulted at the airplane they used because my plane is much, much nicer than that. So that was a great insult. Now, of course, I say that with a smile because somebody will write that Trump was really insulted. You know, that's the way the press does it. But um, I thought it was amateur night. Person. I, I just didn't think it was a very effective commercial. Maybe it is. I, I do say this, though. When they talk about America being competitive and effective, uh, we are not competitive right now. We are not a competitive nation any longer. We've lost our competitive zeal and drive, and we need the right leader. I'll, I'll leave you with one final uh, question. I don't know if you saw the, the brand-new Forbes 400 list which just came out a year ago. Uh, we were in your office when it just came out. Right now, you're number 128 with uh, a worth of $2.9 billion. Is that accurate? No, it's not, but it's okay. It's certainly, uh, I'll be able to eat well, but it's not an accurate number at all, no. So you have more or you got less? Well, they don't know. Well, I don't want to even comment, but they, they don't know. You know, they don't know my numbers. Uh, I'm a private company, and they don't know my numbers. But, and I think they're very professional. I think they try, but it's not an accurate number now. An accurate number now. All right. Uh, so you won't tell us uh, if it's high or low. I assume you think it's low, but that's just my assumption. Well, I can say that. Yes, it's low. It is low. Okay, because last year, that you, I can say, last year you told me flatly what, whatever number they had a year ago, you thought was low also. I don't even know. What was the number a year ago? I don't ago? remember what it was, but I remember you said to but me. did I go up? I guess I went up. I think you did go up. Good. Uh, it's so been that a good, means not too many people went up. At least I went it's, up. It's That's been nice. a good year for you, for Donald Trump. I'm not surprised. Uh, hey, Donald, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Did some checking last year. His uh, net worth, according to Forbes, was $2.4 billion, now $2.9 billion. So he went up half a billion dollars, according to the Forbes 400 list.